listen. The ocean is calling. Join us with the first Filipino scientist to reach the third deepest spot on Earth, the Emden Deep, Dr. Dea Florence Onda. We are at the Emden Deep in the Philippine Trench. I'm actually very honored to be part of this trip. And um, sa mga Pilipino, ito po ang Emden Deep, atin ito. Good day, Ocean Protectors. I'm your diving buddy, Cindy Maduma. And I'm your buddy from Bread Society International, Rodel Flordelis. Happy Philippine Environment Month sa lahat ng ating Ocean Protectors na kasama natin ngayong araw. At dahil Philippine Environment Month ngayon, isa na namang exciting at interesting topic ang pag-uusapan natin sa ating third webinar series. Ngayong araw naman na ito, pag-uusapan naman natin, paano nga ba magiging ang marine scientist. Ano ang magiging papel or ang papel nila sa ating mga pagkatan? So, let's now begin with our third I Protect the Ocean webinar, The Ocean's Calling. My career sa Aragatan, virtual career orientation. And of course, for this webinar, Cindy, we will be highlighting our marine environment as we celebrate the Philippine Environment Month. And at the same time, the careers in marine science and their importance in conservation of our marine environment. And to formally begin our webinar, let us all listen first to the Assistant Director of DNR Biodiversity Management Bureau, Ms. Amelita DJ Ortiz. Sang makahalikasang hapon sa inyong lahat. I would like to extend my deepest appreciation to UNTV and the DIVE in partnership with the Bread Society International for spearheading this relevant online activity in celebration of the Philippine Environment Month. Please allow me to greet our participants as well, including all our viewers, especially the students who have taken their time to join us in this very timely and important webinar, Ocean's Calling, My Career Sa Kairagatan. Let me start by asking you this question. What are the contributions of the ocean to your life? I'm sure every one of you has a fond answer on how the oceans affected your lives. 70% of our planet is covered with the ocean, and our country alone is famous for being archipelagic, a maritime nation. The ocean has been taking care of us and provides for our every need as it produces oxygen that contributes to the air we breathe an important source of food as well as livelihood, and regulates the weather and our climate. As our homes became refuge to the threats caused by COVID-19, the ocean is where the vast population of mar marine biodiversity rely for sanctuary and protection. I could incessantly share the benefits we receive from the ocean, but then there's this prevailing circumstance that I observe. We need more people who would care for our seas and be the instrument of sustainable solutions for our oceans. Proper education may lead to these needed sustainable solutions, but knowledge alone is not enough to address the numerous problems in our ocean. We acknowledge the very important role of science and the people who execute these studies, one of those who are the marine scientists. I hope that through this webinar, our students will be given a glimpse on the exciting and significant role of being a marine scientist and other equally important careers such as marine biologist, marine researcher, marine environment educator, or even an underwater filmmaker. May this program be an inspiration in becoming the future generation of scientists and educators that would deepen our commitment towards ocean conservation. Again, 
Thank you so much for this opportunity and happy Philippine Environment Month to everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Assistant Director Amelita DJ Ortiz for that motivational message. And to also to give us another inspirational message, let us also listen to uh, the message of Dr. Renato Solidun Jr., the Undersecretary for Scientific and uh, Technical Services of the Department of Science and Technology. A pleasant day to everyone. The oceans cover more than 70% of the Earth's surface. They are home to millions of inhabitants, primary source of food and livelihood of billions of people. Oceans help regulate the global climate. These are just some of the importance of the oceans. There is no doubt the ocean plays a vital role in people's lives, especially for us living in an archipelagic country. Unfortunately, the oceans are at risk because of our practices. In fact, we are experiencing the deterioration of marine life because of unsustainable use of our environment, both in the land and in the sea. Climate change is also affecting the oceans and affecting our lives. We need marine scientists to study, understand, and provide solutions to the complex challenges facing the oceans. We must protect the oceans and its biodiversity. In the first webinar, you learned your role as Gen C heroes. In the second webinar, you learned how you can participate as C Zen scientists. In today's webinar, the third of the series, I hope that you will appreciate the call of the ocean. The ocean resonates your vibrant energy, full of excitement and adventure. You can have a bright future by pursuing a career in marine science. I myself has participated in ocean studies. We have sampled rocks beneath Philippine seas and the Southern Pacific Ocean through drilling and dredging of the sea's surface. One of my memorable experience was when tens, hundreds of sea animals, dolphins and whales, spinner whales were encountered. And I was so amazed of the beauty and the vast resources that we have in the ocean. Studies of the oceans are very diverse. One can be a marine biologist, a marine chemist, a geophysicist, a marine geologist, a physical oceanographer, a marine meteorologist, and many, many other fields. The government, particularly the Department of Science and Technology, recognizes the importance of ocean science in marine conservation. I hope that Dr. Onda, one of our DOST's Balik scientists, can inspire you more. Tunay ngang my career sa karagatan. Halina at sumali kayo. Tulungan natin ang maproteksyonan ang karagatan at ang ating mga sarili. Mag-aral tayo ang karagatan. Thank you and stay safe. Kalawak na karagatan ng ating mundo, pinagpala ang ating arkipelago. Pulupulo man ang ating mga isla, pero dahil sa dagat, tayo'y pinag-isa. Dito sa lupa, kay sarap titigan mga hayag na tanawin, pero may kagandahan ding natatako sa ilalim. Tara at ating silipin. Ang Pilipinas ang lunduyan o sentro ng sari-saring buhay dito sa ilalim ng dagat. Sa
Sa Verde Island Passage, matatagpuan ang highest concentration of marine life. Sa Dagat Sulu, ang Tubataha Reefs ay masisilayan mo. 97,000 hectares ang lawak nito. Makikita rito ang mahigit 700 species ng isda at 60% ng lahat ng uri ng coral sa mundo. Matatagpuan din sa Dagat Sulu ang Apple Reef, pangalawa sa pinakamalaking sistema ng bahura sa dagat, sumunod sa Great Barrier Reef ng Australia. Sa Philippine Rhines naman, na nasa silangan ng Luzon, matatagpuan ang pinakamalaking kaldera sa buong mundo. Tirahan ng napakaraming economically important fishes. Sa Philippine Trench, makikita ang pangatlo sa pinakamalalim na bahagi ng Earth, ang Emden Deep. At sa West Philippine Sea, 30% ng coral reefs area sa bansa ay makikita rito. Tirahan ng nasa 500 reef fish species at 1.94 million metric tons ng iba't ibang uri ng malalaking isda, gaya ng tuna at travely. Sobra-sobra para sa pangangailangang pagkain ng milyong-milyong Pilipino kada taon. Ito kayaman ang karagatan ng Pilipinas. Dahil sa marine science, nalalaman natin ng mga bagay na patungkol sa ating karagatan. Pero ano nga ba ang marine science? Kaano ito kahalaga sa pangangalaga ng ating dagat? Now, to give us more inspiration to uh, explore the world of marine science, we will be joining by a special speaker, truly a Filipino pride. And of course, kung sino siya, panoorin natin to. Tubong Brooks Point, Palawan, ang Filipino microbial oceanographer na si Dr. Dale Florence Onda. Ang pinakaunang Filipino scientist na nakarating sa Emden Deep, ang pangatlo sa pinakamalalim na bahagi ng mundo. Pero sino nga ba si Dr. Deo? Siya ay isang associate professor at deputy director for research sa University of the Philippines Marine Science Institute o UPMSI. Ang UPMSI ay isa sa mga nangunguna sa ating bansa pagdating sa marine scientific research tulad ng mga ginagawang pananaliksik sa iba't ibang bahagi ng ating karagatan at sa sari-saring buhay na naninirahan dito na may layuning makapagbigay ng mga scientific-based information upang mas maingatan ng ating marine environment at resources tulad ng West Philippine Sea. At isa si Dr. Deo sa mga chief scientist sa katatapos lamang na dalawang expedition dito. At kasalukuyang gumagawa ng pag-aaral patungkol sa macro at microplastic pollution sa iba't ibang marine habitat sa Palawan. Isa sa mga advokasya ni Dr. Deo ay ang maipakita at mapaunawa sa mga kabataan ang ganda at kahalagahan ng ating karagatan. We are at the Emden Deep in the Philippine Trench. I'm actually very honored to be part of this trip. And um, sa mga Pilipino, ito po ang Emden Deep, atin ito. Halina at sisirin natin ang mundo ng marine science at pakinggan ang tinig ng karagatan sa kwento ng isang Doktor ng Dagat.
Hello sa iyo, Dr. Deo Onda. Welcome po sa ating virtual event. Kamusta po kayo? <laughs> magandang hapon. Magandang hapon po. Magandang hapon din sa mga nakikinig sa atin. Dr. Deo will help us to appreciate more uh, the marine science in a more casual casual way. Kaya nga, sa ating mga audience, huwag po kayong mag-aalala dahil hindi po tayo magiging masyadong technical for today and uh, hindi po masyadong formal ang ating webinar. Kaya, um, chill lang tayo dyan. Okay lang ba, Dr. Deo? So, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'd be happy. To. <laughs> Hindi ko kagusto ng tawagin tong career orientation. Eh. Let's call it a journey <laughs> orientation uh, because I believe uh-huh. a scientist is actually, you know, it's a journey. So uh, we're just sharing, sharing stories of how we ended up here. <laughs> Pero um, hindi siya tungkol lang sa career. Pero yung buhay din si Google is from science. Ah, uh, siguro Cindy, simulan na natin to. Go ahead with your first question. So, Doc Deo. Bakit mo pinili maging scientist? Parang ano no, parang beauty pageant question. And ano yung naging calling sa iyo ng karagatan? I came from a very small town sa Southern Palawan, ang Brooks Point. Actually nakikita yung background na na bundok ito ay nasa bayan namin yan sa Brooks Point. Nung lumalaki ako pag tinatanong ako anong maging anong gusto mong maging, hindi mo naman naiisip actually maging scientist eh, 'di ba? So, ang karaniwan na sagot kapag ikaw ay taga-probinsya sa isang maliit na bayan, ang karaniwan na sagot dyan, maging engineer, maging doktor, maging police, maging architect. Pero hindi ko naman naisip na maging scientist. Siguro dahil nang lumalaki din ako, wala din naman talaga ako nakita masyado sa television o kaya sa mga nababasa ko sa comics na isang scientist. Wala akong nasabi na parang, ah, ito, ito yung gusto kong maging, di ba? I would like to think that I was actually inspired by the people who work in the sea and by the sea itself. Kasi marami ako nakilalang mga manging isda, marami ako nakilalang mga yung buhay nila nakadepende sa dagat. At dun sa mga kwento nila, I got inspired, you know. I started asking questions. Bakit nga ganito? Bakit ganyan? Ano ito? Para saan ito? Ano yung ginagawa nito? So from 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 early on, there was already curiosity. It takes a community to actually raise a scientist. Siguro doon nagsimula yung passion. Na gusto kong maintindihan yung buhay sa dagat kasi may connection siya doon sa buhay ng mga kapitbahay ko ng mga nasa komunidad natin. Pero it never occurred to me that I will actually become a scientist. Hanggang college, pre-med ako eh talagang pa- ang direksyon ko papunta ng, ng, ano, ng medisina. Pero I was given this opportunity to go into a uh, research in an expedition. And then from that experience, sabi ko, parang, parang ito yata yung gusto kong gawin <laughs> ng mas matagal. Hindi, hindi siguro ako para sa ospital, pero para siguro ako dun sa mas malaking ospital, kundi ang dag- na dagat at tawag natin. Um, my parents will all, were also very supportive of me. Nag-dive lesson ako, okay lang. Uh, kung saan-saan ako pupuntang isla, okay lang din sa kanila. Uh, so th- th- there was a support from the family, from the community. And then doon na buhay yung passion, siguro, yung gust- kagustuhan na, mag- na mag-pursue ng marine science. Being someone who grew up in the provinces, ayan, and of course pursuing this kind of career as a marine science, meron ko bang particular na para mga challenges that you experience along the way, and paano mo ba na overcome ito? Yeah, um, dumating ka dun sa point na okay, I wanted to be a scientist. Pero may question, anong career ko pagkatapos ko maging ano pagkatapos ko maging marine biologist? Saan ako pupunta? Second na din doon when you do graduate studies kasi it's very expensive kasi you do research. Eh. So isa na doon yung consideration na paano ko susuportahan yung sarili ko if I wanted to do research. Am I going to get a scholarship? Am I actually qualified to be a scholar? Tapos yun, mas siguro na doon sa financial and second siguro yung afterthought na ano nga pang gagawin ko pagkatapos ko maging magkakaroon ng masters no pero along the way you you will actually discover that opportunities come and you know uh, doors open for you siguro cliche man siyang sabihin naging madali din sa akin dahil na enjoy ko kasi ko ang ginagawa ko and i think when you enjoy something when you like it when you love it it's not even work for you 
and yung yung destiny siguro will just you know open up opportunities for you eh um ang dream ko lang noon sabi ko gusto ko makakita ng aurora borealis um, but i did my phd in the north pole so i was going to the north pole you know once a year for a month so i i really had that experience and again gusto ko kasi siya ito talaga kasi yung gusto kong gawin i appreciate what i do and i love what i do when you love what you do kasi you don't need to exert an effort to excel in it mapapansin at mapapansin ng mga tao that you can accomplish something and from that they will invite you back and opportunities will come to you and alam naman natin doc na malawak yung field ng marine science pero minsan mas alam natin yung nag-aaral ng corals or marine mammals tulad ng mga dolphins pero um, ikaw doc deo paano ka napunta sa field ng marine science kung nasaan ka ngayon tsaka paano ka nakakita ng opportunity para maging microbial oceanographer. So ano ba yung mga ginagawa ng mga oceanographers, specifically microbial oceanographers? <laughs> ang field ng marine science mas masyado sa malawak. Pero when I was looking for an opportunity, ang 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 and then ang naka-interest din talaga sa akin ay the corals. <laughs> Kasi yun yung mas alam natin, sabi ko gusto ko maging coral biologist. O kaya gusto kong maging dolphin expert ganyan. <laughs> Pero as you enter kasi an institution, and I think that's the advantage of going into a formal, you know, educational learning institution, is they open up uh, options for you. Doon ko lang nalaman nang pumasok ako sa MSI na ah yung corals kasi meron siyang mga symbiotic na bacteria. Ah, baka actually hindi coral yung gusto kong aralin kundi yung symbiotic na bacteria. So it opens up opportunities. It actually allows you to uh, discover more about nature. And as you discover more, pumapaling eh, nag-iiba yung interest mo eh. Na parang, ay, di ayoko na mag-coral, gusto ko nang mag-ato. So ganun yung nangyari sa akin. I was, I, I got interested in the marine sciences because I was very attracted to to corals. But as I learned more about the biology of the corals, I also learned that there are other organisms in the marine environment. And as I learned more how they contribute to the processes, alam yung function nila, na parang, ah, kahit ang liit-liit nila, ang dami nilang ginagawa, yung interest mo nagbibuild din dun sa ibang disciplines. And ganun yung nangyari sa akin, na parang, ah, baka hindi coral talaga yung gusto kong aralin. Baka mas interested ako dun sa mga hindi natin nakikita. At yun yung mga bacteria, mga viruses. So, when I entered MSI, ito yung binigay sa akin ng MSI. Yung opportunity to actually do research and specialize in fields that are not mainstream. Inalaw nila ako na magtrabaho dun sa mga maliliit na, yung sa mga microorganisms. And that's where my, my interest actually built up. Ayokong sabihin din na maging microbial oceanographer kayo. Kaya sinasabi ko kanina, ayoko tong sabihin na career orientation. I won't invite you to become a microbial oceanographer, but I will actually enjoin you, invite you to explore the possibilities. Uh, wag tayo wag tayong mag-close ng doors na ito lang yung gusto natin gawin. Actually, ganun yung nangyari. Karamihan sa mga scientists, pag tinatanong nyo, ganun yung kanilang naging, naging journey eh. Pagpasok nila ng first year, iba yung gusto nila. Pag graduate nila, iba na yung kanilang discipline and expertise. But there are a lot of options. There are a lot of opportunity in the marine sciences. Masyadong malawak ang dagat. Masyadong maraming organisms. Masyadong malalim ang karagatan. Malalim din ang mga, ang limitless din yung options and possibilities. Pero ako, bilang isang microbial oceanographer, ano ba yung ginagawa ko? Sabi ko nga kanina, I'm very interested with those things that we do not see, but actually perform the basic and the most important function. So yun yung ginagawa ko. I'm trying to understand yung mga bacteria. Because bacteria at saka ibang mga microorganisms tulad ng phytoplankton, di ba kapag nasa lupa tayo, ang pagkain ng mga hayop ay uno, halaman. But when you go into the middle of the ocean, actually wala ka namang makikita ang puno at halaman. So ano yung kinakain ngayon ng mga isda ng, ng ibang, iba't ibang marine organisms? Those are actually microorganisms, including the phytoplankton. So I was interested with that because, you know, 60% of the oxygen that we breathe, every other breath you take, are actually being produced by this very, very small organisms called phytoplankton. So, pag hihinga kayo, thank God and thank the phytoplankton for producing those oxygen. 
So, ganun ako naging interesado. And that's what I do. I try to understand how these microorganisms like the phytoplankton contribute in the, in the functioning of the ocean. And in the same way, how we are actually changing them by our activities, by what we do, and how they are being affected by climate change. So, yun yung ginagawa ko bilang microbial oceanographer. I'm trying to understand the microbiology plus the oceanography or the movement of the ocean. We, every, everyone, all of us can actually contribute something in the protection of the marine environment. And hopefully, yun nga, pag tinanong ka, taga saan ka na nga, I live, I live in the center of the center of marine biodiversity. That's, that is both a privilege and a responsibility. Experience new exciting dive adventures. Take a plunge with your dive guide. Discover the mystifying underwater world. Behold the unbelievable. Be amazed by the wonders of creation. Ocean Awareness Be first in Ocean Updates And be inspired with the intensified marine conservation advocacies I Protect the Ocean Gear up for a new chapter of Making Waves Beneath With your diving buddy the Dive on its Season 7.